Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor Study. I got my persecution.org magazine this month, and here are some of the headlines. Um, Despite Chinese authorities repeatedly harassing and detaining a house church pastor, his church never ceased meeting in spite of the persecution. Then we go to Afghanistan. Afghan Christians face a death sentence under Taliban rule, but escaping elsewhere may not bring needed relief. And Finland, Finland used to be a Lutheran country. In fact, the state church was Lutheran, but the Lutheran church in Finland now is highly liberal. So this happened. Uh, This woman, a member of the Finnish parliament, is currently facing charges for hate speech because she defended traditional marriage being a man and a woman. She expressed her concern that the Lutheran Church participated in Helsinki Gay Pride Day, and she quoted a passage from Romans. Now, as a result, Finland's prosecutor general has formally filed charges against her. You know, this has been going on for 2,000 years. The Christian Church has been persecuted, and people have been martyred. What I want to do on this program is to tell you the story of Stefan the first Christian martyr, and then learn lessons from his life for our lives. So let's, let's pray first. <clears throat> Father, we pray for Christians around the world who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus, that you'd keep them strong, that they wouldn't deny you, and that they'd stand firm even unto death like Stephen did. And Lord, help us do the same. We ask you now to teach us, Lord. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you take out your Bible, turn to Acts chapter 6. Jesus has died on the cross, risen from the dead, now he's ascended back into heaven, and the church is sent out to convert the world. And the church starts making converts, and then this happens. And this happens so shortly after Christ's ascension into heaven. Acts chapter 6, starting at verse 7. And the word of the Lord kept on spreading, and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests, the Jewish priests, were becoming obedient to the faith. And Stephan, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including both Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and some from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and argued with Stephan. First lesson today, great power can bring great persecution. Stephan's got great power, he's doing miracles, and they, they go after him. I heard a pastor say, I'm not sure American Christians are ready for the suffering that may be coming. I think of those two Christian bakers out in Oregon, they're still in court because they won't bake a gay wedding cake. This has been going on for years. And their suffering is nothing compared to the Christians in North Korea. And if they're caught with the Bible, they're killed. Great power can bring great persecution. Let's look at verse 10. Acts chapter 6, verse 10. And yet they were unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen was speaking. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people, the elders, Jewish elders and scribes, and they came upon him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. And they put before uh, false witnesses who said, This man incessantly speaks against this holy place, the Jewish temple, and against Moses and the law. For we have heard him say that this Nazarene, Jesus, will destroy this place, the temple, and alter the customs which Moses has handed down to us. And fixing their gaze on Stephan, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. 
Here's the next lesson. Christians die well. <laughs> Stefan's about to die, and maybe he's just kind of glowing. John Wesley founded the Methodist Church in England in the 1700s. Methodists were looked down upon because they weren't part of the established official Church of England. And John Wesley said this, The world may not like us Methodist people, but they cannot deny we die well. <laughs> Next verse, Acts 7, verse 1. And the high priest said to Stephen, Are these things so? I want you to notice what's going on here. This is the same high priest, Caiaphas, who got Jesus killed. And now Stephen's standing in front of the same high priest, being charged with the same false charge that Jesus got. They're trying to destroy the temple. Verse 2. And Stephen said, Hear me, brethren and fathers. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. And then Stephen goes into this long speech defending himself from the Old Testament. But it's the end of the speech that gets him in trouble. Skip ahead to verse 51 where Stephen says to the chief uh, Jewish leaders, You men who are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are always resisting the Holy Spirit. You are doing just as your fathers did. Which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who previously announced the coming of the righteous one, Jesus, whose betrayers and murderers now you have become, you who received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you did not keep it. Here's the next lesson. <clears throat> Speak the truth, even if it kills you. I think Stephen might know, look, if I say this, they're going to kill me. He did it anyway. On Mondays, I often pray for the persecuted church. And what I pray, Lord, may the Christians in India or Eritrea, Lord, may they die before they would deny you. And then I prayed for myself, Lord, may I die before I would ever deny you. Look at verse 54. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at Stephen. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. All right, now look at that verse and answer this question. When you're in trouble, what do you do? You look up. Stephen's in trouble. What does he do? He looks up and he sees the glory of God. I love the old song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And the, the slaves in early America sang this spiritual, steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus, steal away, steal away home. I've not got long to stay here. And I encourage you to do that when you're in trouble. <laughs> Turn your eyes, and, and I'm gonna give you this definition of faith. Faith is looking to heaven, seeing that Jesus is in control, even when you're going through agony. That's what Stephen did. True faith is, is realizing, even if they kill me, even if they stone me, I see Jesus in heaven in total control. <laughs> now, look at verse 56. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Now, does something seem strange about that verse? Elsewhere in the New Testament, it says Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. In this verse, it says Jesus stands at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. So here's the next lesson. Jesus stands for his saints. When, when one of his Christians is in trouble, when you're getting persecuted because of your faith, Jesus doesn't sit at the right hand. Jesus gets up. He stands. He's intently concerned when his saints are suffering. Look at verse 57. 
But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears, and they rushed upon him with one impulse. And when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid their robes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Here's the, uh, here's the next lesson. Why didn't God protect Stephen? And you can ask the same question. Lord, how come my five-year-old daughter died? Why did I get cancer? How come my marriage failed? Um, what, you know, fill in the blank. And I, so why didn't God protect Stephen? Here, I think, is the answer. God is glorified through our trials. I mean, we don't like our trials, but they're good for us, and they glorify God. There's a higher purpose for Stephen getting stoned. You see it right in the next chapter, chapter 8 of Acts, verse 1. Now the Christians were scattered out of Jerusalem after the persecution of Stephen. In other words, they had to get out of town and they took the gospel to other lands. So I don't like my trials either, but God's in control even of my trials for a higher purpose. Verse 59 and they went on stoning Stephen as he called upon the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I want you to notice all the parallels between the death of Stephen and the death of Jesus. Follow this, please. Jesus was on trial for speaking against the temple. So was Stephen in front of the same council. Jesus was innocent of those charges. So was Stephen. Jesus talked about being at God's right hand someday at his trial. Stephen says he sees Jesus at God's right hand at his trial. And Jesus says, Father, receive my spirit when he dies. Stephen says, Jesus, receive my spirit. And there's one more parallel. That's in the next verse. Look at verse 60. And falling on his knees, Stephen cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And what did Jesus say on the cross? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So those are the parallels between the two. The, the, so the next lesson is die forgiving others. Jesus died forgiving others. Stephen died forgiving others. Do you have any unfinished business? I mean, I do a lot of funerals as a pastor. People cry at funerals, of course, and sometimes they cry because they had unfinished business with the dead person. They never forgave them, or they never asked for forgiveness. And I, I, I encourage you, me, let's, if you've got unfinished business with people, deal with it now. I heard of a lady who got bit by a mad dog. She gets hydrophobia. She's dying in the hospital, and she's on her bed writing a list, and her friend comes in, are, are, what, are, you, are you writing a list of people to forgive before you die? And she said, no, I'm writing a list of people to bite. <laughs> you don't want to die like that. Die like Stephen and Jesus, forgiving everyone. <clears throat> Look at verse 60, the last verse. And having said this, Stephen fell asleep. You know, I love those words. It doesn't say he croaked, he kicked the bucket, he bit the dust. He, uh, um, it says he just died. He, he, actually, it doesn't even say died. It says he fell asleep. So here's the last lesson. When Christians die, they just fall asleep. Pastor John Piper wrote these words about those words. Do you see how death is stripped of its power here? and made the servant of God's servant, Stephen? Death raises its ugly head and threatens to take away from us all the pleasures of bright spring mornings and buds on the trees and warmth on the skin and the colors of fall and the stars in the night sky. But instead, death now opens the window to heaven and reveals the glory of God. Death threatens to take away our most precious relationships, but instead it shows us Jesus standing to receive us. I, I knew an elderly man by the name of Howard. He went to the church that I served. He, he could be kind of crotchety. He didn't like me much. <laughs> but I remember one Sunday, 
at the end of the service, you know, the pastor gives the blessing and the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Howard comes up after church. Tom, when you were doing this, I saw Jesus behind you doing this, blessing the church. I thought, wow, that's interesting. Not long after, Howard died. And I think the way we are now to see death, death is Jesus blessing you by pulling you out of this evil world and getting you into the next. That's the way we need to see death. We just fall asleep. Well, those are the lessons we learn from Stephen. And I want to just close by one last point. Will you die like Stephen did? Are you ready for death? Or do you have unfinished business, not with just relatives and such, do you have unfinished business with God? I, I, I'm going to show you something from Michelangelo. Michelangelo painted the great, huge Last Judgment, picture of Jesus coming down in the clouds, debtor being pulled into either heaven or hell. And then here's a picture. Can you see this? Um, here's a picture of the man who had unfinished business with God. He dies an unbeliever, and the look on his face is horrendous. You don't want to die like this. You want to die like Stephen. So let me just close by telling you this story. Um, I, uh, I love castles. And the best castles in the world, some of them, are in Wales, England. So a few years ago, I go to Wales. I go to go all these castles. I'm a cheap guy. <laughs> I get cheap airfare, and that's when I go. And I don't stay in hotels much. I, st or I stay in cheap Airbnbs. So I'm in Wales. I go to this Airbnb. The man who owns it is, is in the kitchen, and we meet, and we start talking. He discovers I'm a pastor, and he says, I went through the Alpha class, which is a course in Christianity, and he said, I did that a few years ago. I've been sitting on the fence ever since. I've never really dealt with the whole Christianity thing. Well, another man that was um, staying there comes into the kitchen and hears us talking, and he says, oh, I used to be a Christian, but I, I don't believe in that anymore. I'm an atheist. He and I got into a difficult discussion. And after the atheist left, the owner says to me, you know, I was watching you too. I don't want to be like him. I want to be like you. And he said, I need to somehow get off the fence. I need to do something with, with this whole Christianity. I had a, uh, a gospel track in, in, my, in my room, and I went and I got it. I said, here, would you read this? It's about how to receive Christ, and, and then let's talk. And so next morning on my door, and he said, I opened the door, there's the owner. He says, I've got to do this. And so we sat down, and I, I explained the gospel to him that we're sinners. Christ died for our sins. You need to receive and trust in Christ to be saved. And he said, I've got to do this. <laughs> and then I said, what I do now is I don't do a quick prayer with someone. I, I, I make it a little more difficult, and I say, great, best thing you'll ever do by receiving Christ. But you need to know, you might get persecuted if you do this. You might get killed if you do this. And he said, I'm going to do this. So we got on our knees, he prayed and he received Christ, and then he'd never been baptized. I said, now get baptized, get into a good church and go regularly. But I've got to ask you this question. If today was your last day, would you be looking like this? Because you have unfinished business with God. I urge you today, not tomorrow, today say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart, forgive my sins, and from now on I'm believing in you. And then you get into a good church, you get baptized, because you don't want to die like this. <laughs> you want to die like Stephen did, trusting in Christ. Amen. Welcome to the portion of the pastor's study where we ask Pastor Brock questions regarding the Bible. Pastor Brock, our first question today is, where are Christians being martyred today? 
Some of the worst countries to be a Christian are Eritrea, India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, and just, you know, if I want to encourage people, for free, you can go to persecution.org and say, I want your free monthly magazine. And this will tell you where the really heartaches are going on around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything we can do to help them? Well, you know, I would, I, I, you get this and you pray. When you read these articles, you pray for these people. Uh, I like to give my money to, inter it's called International Christian Concern. And they help people who've lost their father because he was killed, mm -hmm. and they'll help start a farm or something. And the other thing we can do, other than prayer and giving, uh, is to just, you know, talk. When once a year there's supposed to be a persecution Sunday, make sure your pastor has mm -hmm. prayers for the persecuted during that Sunday. Don't ignore that that day. So another great, if, if, if this is called International Christian Concern Persecution.org, another great uh, organization just like it is called. Voice of the Martyrs, mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. of those groups I would give money to. Okay. Yeah. Does Jesus appear to people today? Yeah, we just read about Stephen and Jesus appearing to him right before he died. Mm -hmm. And I told the story of Howard, uh, who I think had a vision of Christ before he died. So I think God can do it. I don't think, it's, I don't think most of us get that in our lifetime. Now and then somebody will tell me a story where they believe they saw Christ or an angel, and I, I think that's all real possible. There are people that see Christ and angels every day and they're a little mentally off. Mm -hmm. So not, you know, I, I think we just need to be careful. Mm -hmm. Discern. Mm -hmm. If I am not sure that I am going to heaven, does that mean I am not a Christian? Yeah. I want to say this. When I came to the assurance of my salvation when I was about 20 years old, it changed my life. I mean, I was raised as a Christian, and I, I prayed and read the Bible since I was 13, and I think I was saved. But when somebody explained to me, I can know I'm saved, mm -hmm. because 1 John 5.13 promises me, you who believe in the Son of God, you may know that you have eternal life. That changed my life, and I ever since that, mm -hmm. I know I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Now, are there days I wonder? There are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the fact that we have doubts of our salvation does not rob our sal sal salvation. Um, uh, so... I mean, Mona, I've said this before. I know I'm going to heaven and my sins are forgiven because I'm saved by the grace of God and by Christ on the cross. Amen. I know that's true. I also think it's going to be true when I get into heaven, part of me is going to say, you're kidding. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I, I, the fact that we have doubts, we all have doubts. But what saves us is not the strength of our faith. What saves us is what our faith is in. Mm -hmm. and that is Christ. And that's always strong, even when I'm doubting. Amen. Yeah. Do we sleep when we die? Don't we immediately go to be with Jesus? Yeah, and it said there about Stephen that he fell asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, so do you sleep for 2,000 years or 100 years? Well, he, there are two, two different views. Some Christians believe in what's called soul sleep, mm -hmm. that when you die, you go to sleep until Judgment Day, then you're raised. And there are verses about being raised on the last day. Other people believe, and this is what I believe, that when you die, your, your body goes to sleep, but your spirit is raised. And Christ, my grandma's with Christ right now. Mm -hmm. And if you remember when Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, Moses and Elijah from the Old Testament show up mm -hmm. and they're talking to Jesus. They're not sleeping, mm -hmm. they're alive and talking. So, and today you will be with me in paradise, Jesus said to the thief before he died. So I think today when you die, boom, you go to heaven, but you're not raised from the dead with your perfect new body and that you get on Judgment Day. That's the way I think we put all the verses together. Mm -hmm. and, that's that. and you know, I might be wrong on some of this, but that's the, that's the way I think it's gonna work. Makes good sense. Yeah, yeah. Is there ever a time we are not to speak the truth, but just be quiet? Yeah, what if Stephen would have just been quiet? He might have been around a lot longer. I think it depends on the situation, because remember when Jesus was before Pilate? Mm -hmm. Jesus was silent. He wouldn't answer the mm -hmm. questions, and I think there comes a point when you share Christ with someone, there does perhaps come a point when, I'm not going to bring it up ever again, they've heard it, they've heard me, now I'm just going to be quiet and pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there are times you hold your tongue, you bite your, I have certain relatives, I have to bite my tongue when I'm around them, mm -hmm. but they've heard the gospel from me, but okay. Uh, and, but then other times, look, I'm going to speak the truth, and if they kill me, they kill me. Mm -hmm. Depends right. on how the Holy Spirit leads. And the situation, I yeah. guess. 
Um, here's a writer, a viewer wrote in, I am a Gideon and speak at various denominations. Should I speak at a denomination that has gone astray? Yeah, I got a letter from a Gideon, and, he, and I'm going to read a little bit further of what he said. Okay. Several denominations have left the path of wisdom, like, and he mentions United Church of Christ, the Episcopal Church, ELCA Lutherans, Presbyterian Church USA, Disciples of Christ, United Methodists. And Gideons raise money to put Bibles in the hotel rooms, mm -hmm. and they've always gone into all kinds of denominations to get those funds. Well, those denominations used to be biblical. The ones I just mentioned now have become very pro-gay, a lot of them are pro-abortion rights, and, and he's wondering, do we go into these churches anymore? Well, I looked into it. God bless the international cabinet of the Gideon Church, and here's what they, what they have given now as, as the uh, advice. <clears throat> if a church within the local camp, that's Gideon camp, states in public media that it is supportive of sexual behavior contrary to scriptural beliefs as held by the Gideons, the camp should quietly withdraw and pray. The camp should have no further relationship with that church and should cease all Gideon activities with that church. Hmm. I thought, amen. Mm -hmm. Where do you ever see anybody talking like that anymore? Mm -hmm. So I think God bless the Gideons. I think when a church goes astray, you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. Willing to take a stand. Yep, yep. Pastor Brock, what is your stance on once saved, always saved? I struggle with this subject. I personally believe we are each given free will. Even after genuine salvation, I believe we still have the free will to reject Christ. I do believe one can lose their salvation. I am a lifelong Baptist, and I know this goes against traditional Baptist teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends again on which Baptist. There are free will Baptists, mm -hmm. and then there are Calvinist Baptists. I don't believe in free will. And what I mean by that, I don't think on my own power I can come to my Lord Jesus Christ or believe in him, but the Holy Spirit, that's, I'm quoting Luther now, mm -hmm. it's the Holy Spirit who converts us. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in free will. I think you have to read Romans 9, 10, and 11, and that'll teach you that if you're saved today, it's because before you were born, God predestined you to be saved. And that opens up, I know, a bit of a can of worms, and we got about 40 seconds left. <laughs> but just, again, read Romans 9, 10, and 11. I believe if you're a saved believer, it's because God predestined you. Open your heart like you opened Lydia's heart in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. And the only and they're preaching in the book of Acts, and it says, as many as were appointed to eternal life believe what the apostles said. So Can we continue go. to pray for our family and relatives that oh, God till, would open their Till I die, I'm going to pray that way. Okay, so yeah. never give up on never. that. Never. Mm -mm. Well, we're just running out of time. We want to thank you for joining us today. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. God bless you. See you next time on The Pastor Study. Thank you for watching The Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.